I've known them my entire life. I think almost anyone watching this can say the same. They've been here for nearly 100 years. And um, as a matter of fact, their 100th birthday is coming up in just a few months as I record this in mid-December 2022. The reason that I sprung to record this presentation here is that Volodymyr Zelensky, who I'm sure, again, everyone right now is completely familiar with, um, <clears throat> he just won the coveted Person of the Year from Time magazine. And it m triggered me to remember images I've seen of some of these other people that have made it to the cover of Time magazine as the person of the year or of the century or the planet of the year, as we will see. <clears throat> and I wondered, is this another in a very, very, very long line of types of manipulation through multimedia, as a matter of fact? This is a magazine. It's actually called a news magazine, specifically. This is a certain type of magazine, which I actually wasn't aware of it, but um, it's bottom line is that something like Time Magazine has less articles than a newspaper would, let's say, or a news program, but it has more depth per article, giving people the chance to really see all the sides of something, apparently. Now, based on what I'm going to show you, I hope to prove that Time Magazine hasn't been giving you fully detailed, thoughtful approaches to every story they've ever covered from both sides, giving you a chance to think for yourself and to maybe even look into things further. That's what I do here. Perhaps I'm a news magazine here at Third Eye Edify. Like and subscribe and share. I wonder if looking into the beginnings, looking into some of the treachery that went into its longevity, some of the ways that it actually manipulated its public into accepting new terminology for things, neologisms as they be called. I wonder about all those things. I looked back at some of the covers. They used to be man and woman of the year, now they're person of the year, of course. But that's neither, <laughs> neither here nor there. So let's get into it. What exactly is Time Magazine? Who started it? Who makes decisions for it? Has it been one person at the helm all this time? The founders are now dead. So that, of course, is not true. But I imagine the sentiment and the weight behind each issue remains. And this is without a doubt. Here is an image of Henry Robinson Luce, L-U-C-E. He was born in China as a Presbyterian, left at 15, and you know exactly where he went after that, eventually went to Yale. Um, him and the other founder, who he would be uh, a co-founder with, Britton Hayden, they were both at Yale. And they were both as it's well documented, I didn't have to search far for this whatsoever. They were both in Skull and Bones. Good old 322. And um, once you hear Yale and somebody with this much power and clout, you can assume they did go through Skull and Bones. Don't let this image make you think of whatever it's trying to make you think of. That's not the point here. You're not automatically evil if you work for the government or if you work or if you're part of skull and bones but the people that come out of them not only have hit the covers of these magazines but they've done a lot more than that presidents and so on very influential people have been here so back to this man loose um he founded time magazine co-founder with Britton hayden and we'll get into the nefarious details of that in a moment he also founded life Fortune, and Sports Illustrated, which I definitely did not know about Sports Illustrated. But uh, seeing their covers in the past two, three years, I would say it's pretty clear. 
as a matter of fact, I was the manager of a music store for quite a, quite some time. And once COVID started getting pretty crazy, once the political heat started getting a little crazier and it seemed like civil war was incoming, the covers of The Atlantic and Sports Illustrated were getting a little too provocative for me personally to allow to even be in the store in the eyes of children, in view of children, or just starting a fight in the lobby. I get rid of the magazines. I don't care what that makes me look like. They were extremely biased. I wasn't choosing a side. Coke or Pepsi, I wasn't choosing a side. They were. They had covers that did not need to be seen by kids, and they had topics that I didn't really feel like presenting in the environment that I was responsible for. Don't mind my rant there. I thought it was important, as a matter of fact. But um, b- being that, that he founded all these, he also had some radio and some you know, television things. He was actually credited as the very first multimedia company. This would be Time Warner at this point. Time Inc., as I'm sure you've all heard of Time Warner. This man, as I mentioned, was born in China. He was a proponent of the China Lobby, which some of you may be familiar with. It's an advocacy group for China from the 30s on to about the mid-70s, it seems. I'm sure they still exist, but that's when they're credited as existing. He actually spoke Chinese and several other languages, certainly spoke English. Um, New York City, March 3rd, 1923, is when Time Magazine was founded. So he was in the heart of it all. And there are actually two other subsidiaries of Time, Time Atlantic, which is in London, and Time Asia, which is in Hong Kong. This means very clearly that Time Magazine exists in the very heart of the three major financial epicenters of the world, Hong Kong, New York City, and City of London, which is not London. And perhaps I can do maybe an entire episode on that. It's a very unique place with a lot of very interesting things, parallels to things like our Federal Reserve and things of that nature. If you're not familiar with it, I would look into it for sure. Go check out what City of London is. Not London, the city, right? So um, Britton Hayden, the co-founder, is um, he was the partner of time. He was the editor of time and he was the inventor of what's being credited and called its revolutionary writing style actually called time style is a name for the way that time magazine presented its articles its in-depth articles here's an image of Britton Hayden and he he had he had a knack for this he was certainly a major force behind why time was so successful the business end, of course, was loose, if you hadn't already guessed. But it takes somebody like this to really push something of that nature, especially at the time that it came out, and for it to stick around for so long. It's being um, described, time style, as an irreverent, purposefully light-hearted, and most importantly, inverted. I added the most importantly part there. It's an inverted style of speaking. Picture Yoda from Star Wars. Um, this is, it's almost comical in a certain way, but it's just the way that it was. I think it's its really ballsy to go out and make a fresh original style. And it's a really long time ago for something like that to have happened. Now, I mentioned a neologism before. And pretty much meaning that a word that's coming into use but wasn't really part of any language or wasn't ever didn't really exist before um time magazine is responsible for lots of these things and not too many things in history get credited for something like this words like socialite guesstimate televangelist pundit and others these words were actually invented by time magazine time magazine apparently introduced the name world war ii I guess it was kind of going to happen, but maybe the plan wasn't to call it a sequel, which almost gives it an irreverent and purposely lighthearted approach, in my opinion. So this is the style of time. Yeah, I can see that. And um, this inverted style is potentially comparable to Homer and Virgil. 
by the way. So if you know any of their work, you may have an idea how Time Magazine reads if you've never picked up the magazine yourself. Now, I mentioned something nefarious earlier. Um, picture this. Britain died in early 1929. He left a will for his family for his Time Inc. stock <clears throat> Excuse me. And he left it so it could not be touched for 49 years. His intention was for it to grow and give them a humongous, you know, pay afterwards, obviously. So what happened is, and this is the story that's available to me. I can't find very, you know, deep secret hidden records about all this stuff, but it's on the record that Luce actually formed a, in quotes, syndicate to obtain this stock against the will of Britain Hayden because if you're that powerful and rich you can do it you can get around the law of a will and other things like that and he actually he took it for himself he also kept all the papers of Britain Hayden he had lots of writing unreleased information unreleased articles and he would release them slowly over time without giving any credit under his own name so it's very, this whole mag, this news magazine time is based in a lot of treacherous, nefarious things. It already shouldn't be trusted. And again, this is not a left, right, red or blue thing. But as soon as you pull the first layer off the onion, it stinks as always. And Time Magazine is no different. It shaped public opinion for an entire century now, almost. It's been at the forefront. You've all seen at least one cover of Time Magazine. If you've never read it, you've definitely seen at least one cover. They're provocative. They get you to want the issue. That's the point of them. But what's a little too provocative for me is all these choices for person of the year that they've made over the past hundred years. You may be surprised, and I hope to surprise you with the information I have. I hope I've already surprised you. I didn't know that. <laughs> you you can't imagine. You can't make this stuff up. Co-founder of your, you know, he started an empire, this guy Luce. And he's stealing the stock from his co-founder who died and his name is right off of the magazine weeks later. Not great. Luce is said to have altered many articles before release so he can fit the narrative that he's looking for. Keep in mind that he's pro-China. Um, he acted as if he was pro-America. He called the 20th century the American century, a quote that he potentially stole from H.G. Wells, as far as my research allowed me to see. I don't know what book or what a program that's from, the H.G. Wells quote, but if you do know... Leave me a comment. Tell me about it. We, we, I'd love to hear what anyone knows about this information. Because a lot of this is new for me, I must say. Um, you know, I wanted to mention, Skull and Bones is tied to Johns Hopkins University. On top of so many other things. These are the types of things that come out of Skull and Bones. The types of things that shape public opinion, that shape the course of history. Think of the Bilderberg Group. Think of the Club of Rome. Anything like that. United Nations, all of these groups, International Monetary Fund, they shape the course of history. Now, the usual response I get is, well, somebody has to. Is that true? I would say probably not. I read a little, quick little 13-page essay that... Uh, Henry Luce wrote in 1941 called The American Century. 1941, directly in the midst of World War II, a war that he personally named through this magazine. And I think I found a very telling pair of sentences as far as the goals of this magazine. It's not meant that way. This entire thing is talking about how America is letting itself down. It says we're the most informed country on the planet, and yet... We can't take the information properly. We're rich beyond our wildest dreams, and yet there is poverty around us. Now, yeah, some of that makes sense. Of course it does. But also saying that even if we, we weren't in the war yet, I guess, if, if we don't want to be in war, 
We are anyway. It's too late. People need our defenses against Hitler. Things of that nature. Here's two sentences that you should check out right now. The day-to-day present is clear. The issues of tomorrow are befogged. Is Time Magazine responsible for this befogging, as he says? I would say this is a subconscious act of guilty conscience coming out in his writing. Just an opinion, of course. Another quote, during the Vietnam War, it was and is the American task to take the lead in creating a new form of world order. Where have I heard that before? Perhaps I heard it from one of his many people of the year, George H.W. Bush. Not the law of the jungle, he said. George H.W. Bush earning that award in 1990. He was the person of the year. I have a nice little list here. Not all of them, but the ones that matter to me. And um, so much more to mention, but I think what would be best if I move on to what I'm picturing as the second half of this, where I'm going to look at people that have one person of the year that maybe, maybe, maybe I'm taking it out of context. Maybe I've got the wrong idea. You be the judge. You be the judge of that. My list starts with three-time winner, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 1932, 1934, and 1941. Same year as he wrote The Great American Century. Now, why do I think Roosevelt shouldn't really be winning this award? Person of the Year. Why indeed? Picture this. In 1933, in March of 1933, 20 years after the Fed and 10 years after Time Magazine had begun, there was a banking holiday. The Emergency Banking Act, Executive Order 6102, forbidding the hoarding of gold coin, gold bullion, and gold certificates within the continental U.S. It wasn't repealed until 1974, by Ford, Gerald Ford. A similar time frame of this China lobby, by the way. Just a coincidence, of course, no comment. But um, by the 20s, the Fed had almost reached its limit of allowable credit in federal demand notes. They started in 1913. That's seven years. The Fed was a disaster in seven years. Are we even remotely surprised? It was. It had reached the limit of allowable credit which could be backed by gold in its possession. So hoarding gold was stalling economic growth and worsening the Depression. Now, does anyone listening to this really believe that that's true? Or is the Fed completely responsible for all of this? Or has a very, very, very large part to do with it? I'm not going into ridiculously large detail about this right now. Because a lot of people already have, and wonderfully so. But if you're not aware of what the Fed is, how it started, and what it does, it's definitely time to know. It's time to know why you lose so much money every paycheck in taxes. It's time to know what taxes are legal and what aren't. Unapportioned taxes that you can't even discover what they're being used for. Slavery, in other words. At least mental slavery, at the very least. But hey, we got sports. We're doing fine. If your team's winning, you're doing even better. (laughs) Ha! If only, I'm sure. So, what do we think about this, this magazine? This news magazine that at the time was congratulating a president for telling us, you can't hoard gold. What are you doing? That's not for you. It's for us. This is just the start. And before I even mention the rest of these persons of the year that I wanted to mention, I think you should take a look at some of their other covers that are not necessarily person of the year, but something to look at here. 
Here is time's planet of the year. Why? Is it covered in barbed wire? What is that? Endangered Earth. We know where this is going. It's going to climate change. And the year is? 1989. Ten years later? Meshuggah with chaos fear. Well, similar but different, but I'd say they were right on track. The three astronauts of Apollo 8 made it. You'd think Neil Armstrong could be man of the year, based on what they tell us, but he did not make that cut. But the first people to orbit the moon ten times and come back with absolutely zero effects from the radiation of the Van Allen belts, as they say, they didn't step off onto the moon, but they went there. Perhaps a lot of you didn't know that. Apollo 8 left low Earth orbit first. That's why they're there. And Neil Armstrong and the rest are not. The Zika virus is the next public health crisis in your backyard. What was that quote that I read? The issues of tomorrow are befogged. This is why. This is exactly why. Here's another provocative cover. An American failure. This, of course, having to do with COVID-1984. So who's next up on the list here? Who else was the Time Magazine Person of the Year? 1938. Everyone's favorite man to love to hate. Wearing a Buddhist symbol in reverse. Adolf Hitler. Is this new information to you? Did you know that Hitler was the time person of the year? I find it interesting that there's going to be a lot of back and forth out of the people I show you. I'm not going to show every cover, of course. But it seems as if they had changed their mind eventually, this news magazine. For example, there was a cover with a bunch of red X's. Hitler's there and some other people. Perhaps they realized that they had messed up. Perhaps they wanted to take it back. I can't say. But I can say that it's very telling. When you put him on the cover and you say all these things about him following that, once World War II really hit its stride, oops, or were they trying to say that he's the most impactful human being on Earth in a negative way? I don't care if I'm misinterpreting it. This Time magazine putting Zelensky on the cover this year, the man who all of your tax dollars are going to, whether you think it's right or not, they love Hitler too. Because the guy who made this thing was born in China. Does that have anything to do with it? I think so. 1939 and 1942, Joseph Stalin, a man who was against Hitler, apparently. But a man who is not too well regarded, I'd say. Very interesting. At the very least, very interesting. I wrote 1968 were the three Apollo 8 mission um, astronauts. I, I, so, I showed that. 1969, the Middle Americans. So, we're about to go to the moon. Middle America, we care so much. You're the people of the year. Now give us all your money. <laughs> so, anyway. 1972. Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger. 72 is the year that Nixon went to China. So it's almost a guarantee that this was going to happen, of course. View you as, you know, you were the single most admired American by the Chinese. The very favorite person of China. Well, why wouldn't he be in that case? 1982. The year I was born. And what a surprise that I was raised in the generation to play video games nonstop and watch television like it was my job to choose what movie theater I wanted to go to based on the arcade games in the lobby. 
to be completely primed and ready for the internet movement. To be convinced that I wanted to go to school for computer science, which I started in, in 2000. The machine of the year, the computer moves in. Now, this is worth noting at this time of our history. It's not like this is a evil or vindictive thing, but it shows that Time Magazine knew exactly what was going on culturally. Yes, it was their job to do this, but that's what we are shown to know. What's more important to discuss is that if you didn't think that yet, now you did. This was the day that changed it for you. You got this in the mail, like the computer moves into my house. This used to be a little makeup table. And I used to sit here to read. Now I can do this stuff. Look at the image of the person. It's a it's a nothing. It's a zero. He's bald. He's totally white. In this example, he is the negative space. Very peculiar image, I'd say, overall. Again, shaping public opinion. We know what today is, but the future issues are befogged because of institutions like this. 1988. The endangered earth. The image I showed earlier. Maybe I said 89 before. Sorry about that. The endangered earth. Once again, too many people. Give us all your money. You keep breathing, you keep killing the earth. You can't drive all that way to work in your Hummer. We'll make the decisions as we fly from place to place in our own private jets. No HOV lanes in the sky. I'm a little upset. I'm not going to let it get to me, don't worry. 1990, as I mentioned earlier, George H.W. Bush, previous head of the CIA at the time that Kennedy was killed, and then the President of the United States. Then we went to war, the Gulf War, the first Gulf War. A standing ovation for you, my friend. I'm so glad that all of that happened. Let's put you on the cover of Time Magazine as the person of the year. So that way, if anyone does have kind of a I'm not sure feeling about you, well, they're on your side now, buddy. Don't worry about it. Keep voting. 1991, Ted Turner. Speaking of the endangered earth, speaking of climate change, here's something he said right around that time. So too, what's wrong with the population? I mean, we're too many people. That's what. That's why we have global warming. We have global warming because too many people are using too much stuff. But if they there have, were less people, they'd be using less stuff. It, you know, we don't get global warming and the nuclear weapons straight out. We don't have to worry about human rights. Well, all the humans will all be gone. There's too many people. He's not the first. He won't be the last. But he did start CNN, and he does have his own conglomerate, just like Luce. There is hardly a difference between the two of them. I'm sure he stepped on a lot of toes to get to where he was. He's not our friend, and he should not be on the cover of any magazine except with him sitting behind bars or with a red X through his face. Because he is a proponent of all the things that are trying to destroy humanity. He tells you nuclear weapons and climate change will. He says things are going to be terrible in 10, 20, 30 years. Unimaginably terrible. He corrects himself. He's going through the cue cards. He knows. He's all part. Of, they're all part of this syndicate. Much like the kind that Luce used to steal the his, who thought he was his friend, co-founder of Time Magazine stock from his family. These are the kinds of people we're dealing with, and this magazine is still thriving, and it's still doing exactly what it's supposed to do: not to inform you but to push you in a certain direction, to think a certain way, to like certain people and to not like certain people. Who else are we supposed to like in 1999? Jeff Bezos. The person who personally killed 
a very large portion of, portion of small businesses. I remember when Amazon came out, I thought that it was for books only at first. Am I wrong about that? I don't quite remember. And then they were saying, hey, people can jump on and sell through us. Now, people don't leave the house. They don't want to see what's hanging out at small businesses. Hey, why is this $10 cheaper on Amazon? When is the last... Have you ever heard someone say that? I'm sure you have. Have you thought it? You probably have. And it's okay. But we can do our best to not use Amazon as much as possible. Find something you like. Go to the website of the place that actually created it and buy it from there. Yes, you have to enter your credit card each and every time. So what? Think about it. Also in 1999, person of the century, Albert Einstein. A person I put on the cover of the thumbnail, I'm sorry, the thumbnail of my episode 10, Drop Your Heroes. I loved Einstein. I worshipped everything he said when I was young. E equals MC squared. Of course it does. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? But... Special theory of relativity. Keyword being theory, as we've discussed many times on this show. People are still trying to prove his theories. The types of theories that he said were improvable. He said gravity isn't measurable. He said lots of things. He said light can bend. He probably thinks oceans can bend as well. It's not proven. It can't be proven. And people keep making up new theories to prove his theories. Essentially making our way to the quantum realm. Where anything can happen and it's up to the viewer to see it or whatever. I know more than that, but I'm not interested in getting into it. I'm only a little bit upset today, my friends. 2000. Take a guess. George W. Bush became president. And again, as I'm naming these names, are you fans of these people? Or are you finding that Time Magazine is choosing these not good people? We'll leave it at that. As person of the year, of course it shapes public opinion. The very next year, 2001, we know what happened. But who else was responsible for pushing that narrative? Weapons of mass destruction. Go get Iraq. Go get Afghanistan. No one can stand in our way. Mission accomplished. Rudy Giuliani. I pulled up a video of him doing his best to get everyone rah, rah, rah behind that war. War and terror, he said. I'm not even going to show it. I have it queued up. I'm not even going to touch it. I don't care. It's completely despicable. And there's a wonderful chapter, um, chapter by chapter, program by Corbett Report, 9-11 Suspects. And good old Rudy Giuliani's right there. So go watch that. You can get as much as you need to from there. 2004, George W. Bush again. We love him. Fool me once, it won't get fooled again. He used his own words against him. 2005, triple whammy slammy. Bill Gates, Melinda Gates, and Bono. For all of his philanthropy? He gave me an album on iTunes that I didn't ask for, that I didn't like at all. Well, I only heard a few songs, but that was enough. Not important. Bill and Melinda Gates. Shooting it right in the vein, as he said. Being sued by India, other places. Suddenly, the largest farmland owner in the country. And China's up on that list too. Perhaps no small part thanks to Time Magazine. Time Warner. 
we could go on for 17 hours straight about Bill Gates, who got divorced the same exact week as Jeff Bezos during COVID. Am I remembering that correctly? All these little coincidences that I don't like. I don't like most of the stuff that's going on here. But that's why I'm here to bring you this information because I think it's very important. And I hope you do too. If you think this is valuable, find me on Rockfin. It's the best way you can support me. I'm also on Patreon. Supporting me through Rockfin is supporting Rockfin and I want that. You. Yes, you. You control the information age. Welcome to your world. Or, welcome to your world. 2006. Now, what's up on the screen here? Yes, it's nice for someone to give you a little clappy clappy. You're the person of the year. How wonderful. What's on the screen? Yes, there's you, period. But we also see that this person was going to be watching a video. What do you do on your computer? You watch videos. You control the information age by consuming entertainment, by consuming certain YouTube videos, certain websites. Welcome to your world. You created it. It's your fault that we all pushed you into this paradigm of living. It's your fault. Is it? Or is it just controlled obsolescence like everything else? Guess who's next, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, it's a, we got a list here. I'm, I'm more than halfway through, by the way. But what a what a list. What a list so far. 2007. The other Vladimir, Vladimir, Vladimir Putin. That's right. Vladimir Putin, person of the year, 2007. How long ago was that? It's not that long ago. Did they like him? I thought we were supposed to hate him and all of the largest country on earth where clearly every single person is an awful person. I don't even talk to them. I think Russian's kind of a beautiful language. First of all, a lot of great stuff has come from their culture, especially music. Dmitry Shostakovich. Ah, oh, he's got some good stuff. This is the back and forth that I'm talking about. I recently saw some YouTube interview. It wasn't a YouTube interview. It was an interview of uh, Vladimir Zelensky. And the title of the YouTube video, Zelensky, Putin, Trump. Every single one of them has been person of the year now. It's just par for the course. They put you through a certain path of information. There's an entire world of information that you know nothing about. Yes, some countries are power players more than others, of course. But there's lots of important things happening everywhere. And for us to think we know everything, like Lou said, we are the most informed country. Well, I think maybe we are, maybe. But this is the same country that had Nixon make that phone call to the moon. Nixon, an actor, by the way. Trump, an actor. 2008, history, Barack Obama. More drone strikes than any other presidents. Now, well, clearly the nature of his presidency and them not saying the, the name Hussein during his inauguration, if some of you remember. They skipped over the Barack Hussein Obama. Is that marketing? That's marketing 101, especially when it's on camera for you to see. I hope I'm getting the point across that this is all a game much like the outside of the Globe Theater for good old Shakespeare. The world is a stage or whatever you think the translation might mean because it's been debated what it exactly is saying. 2009, Ben Bernanke, chairman of the Fed at the time. During the financial crisis, we had them, the housing bubble, and here he is uh, testifying. Mr. Chairman, at what 
point will the taxpayer no longer be on the hook for the massive AIG failure? What is the end game for American taxpayers? Well, Senator, first of all, um, the, um, the AIG situation is obviously a very uncom uncomfortable one for me as well as for, as, as well as for you. Um, we took those actions because we felt that, first of all, that the failure of the world's largest insurance company um, with millions of policyholders, thousands of derivatives and credit uh, insurance counterparties, and a huge number of other uh, interactions with other financial firms uh, would be devastating to the stability of the world financial system. And if there's been any doubt about the power of financial stress to affect the real economy, I hope that it's been removed at this point. And so an important consideration in our action certainly was to try to preserve financial stability. Secondly, of course, we now have uh, a necessity and regrettably uh, a significant public investment in the company. Uh, our belief was that to allow the company to fail at this juncture, putting aside its huge adverse effects on the financial system and on the economy, would have greatly also impaired the ability of the government to recover the investments that have already been made in the company. The actions we've taken will help to stabilize the company, will maintain its credit rating, will allow it to continue its process of spinning off and selling its constituent non-core companies, will allow it to continue to strengthen its core companies uh, within the United States. Um, we don't know for sure what the future will bring. We don't know how the financial system will evolve or how the economy will evolve. But I do think that this does give us the best chance both to achieve financial stability and as well to ultimately recover most or all of the investments that the public has made in AIG. A AIG has given the counterparties $20 billion. Those people could be just about anybody in the world. Why won't the Fed disclose who those are? Well, well first, uh, in terms of disclosures, I think it's very important that we be as open and transparent as possible. And as I've indicated last week in my, um, in my uh, testimony, Humphrey Hawkins' testimony, the Fed has set up a committee headed by Vice Chairman Cohn who's going to review all of our disclosure policies and try and ascertain what types of information we can uh, disclose without adversely affecting uh, policy effectiveness, for example. A well-trained face of the Fed, I'd say. Certainly handled it well, but do you like what he's saying? I like what the questioning was. I like the questioning that was going on, but... What he's essentially saying is, too big to fail, AIG. If you recall the too big to fail fiasco. And are you too big to fail? No, you can fail. Goodbye, AIG. They've got to survive so they can keep doing what they're doing and passing along all the savings onto us. This is how the system we're in works. And there are some people that do want to keep it going. But it doesn't last. There's one thing that Hollywood has shown us. It's that the bad guy either dies or has a miserable ending. Unless, of course, there's five sequels. 2010. Mark Zuckerberg. Good old robot boy himself. Um, I'm not going to get into it. Facebook is now called Meta. The metaverse is obviously a big deal. He's trying to sell you on keeping a headset on for at least half of the day. Everything's going to be done in the metaverse. He's pushing for that everything app, just like Elon Musk, just like SBF, Sam Bankman Freed was pushing with FTX. We saw how that went. Clearly just a puppet placed in as a ticking time bomb. More are to come on that soon. Despicable. Facebook is one of the most manipulative tools ever created. And it was created by DARPA. It was created as an... Uh, it was made to be... To turn you into... a Just a dump of data for them to take. On top of many other things. Just a small example of what Facebook does to you. Other than getting you to doom scroll for half your day, every day. None of these people are good people. 2012, Barack Obama again. Enough said. I don't even want to get into it. An orator. An author. Good for him. He came out of nowhere. 
anyone because media is incredibly powerful. Twenty fifteen, Angela Merkel. German Chancellor. Do we love Germany? I thought we were supposed to not really like Germany. I thought Hitler made Germany a poisonous seed. The Germans, the germs. I think, again, Germany is a wonderful place, full of ingenuity and craftsmanship beyond most countries' capabilities. The cultural epicenter of the world for centuries, in my opinion. The hub of philosophy. I love the language. I've sung the language. I've sung Russian too, by the way. I think it's a wonderful language. I do. Public opinion is very different. And it's because of things like Time Magazine. Time and time and time again, as my thumbnail says. 2016. Donald Trump. Is this a touchy subject? Maybe for some it is. I have said things about him in the past. I'll say what I basically have said again. He's obviously something of an actor. He clearly was the mogul that we know him to be. But his, his attitude... can easily engender infighting. It can easily cause a stir at the very least. And there's just so many accusations of fraud and other things. I don't care if they're true. It was an interesting choice. They probably had it planned all along. Just like Chauncey Gardner if you're not sure who that is, he was from a pretty amazing movie. I would look into it. And um, he's so divisive that it seems as if they put him on just because he was chosen to be president. Um, th this, this sells the magazine. I know why he's there. I'm not an idiot. But you'd be an idiot if you didn't think he was an actor and just part of the game. He may not be fully aware of the game. But... He said some things that keep me away from liking him. At all. I assume he's just part of the game. No. No more. No more on that. 2018. What was being presented to us as the something of the year? The war on truth. Am I in the war on truth? Is Third Eye Edify a potential news magazine? Am I against the war on truth? I'm not a magazine, but news magazines can also be called things like 60 Minutes or A Current Affair from the late 80s, early 90s, you may remember. Or that show Sightings, which had so many lies that I just bought it all when I was little. I sure did. Fake news. The war on truth is a war against what I'm doing here. And I definitely think it's a war on you. People are shadow banned left and right. The Last American Vagabond? Ryan Christian, one of the best reporters out there, is still banned from Twitter. Post-Elon Musk. It hasn't changed. You think Elon Musk is the savior? Please. 2019. Somebody I've mentioned in a previous episode. Greta Thunberg. With today's emissions levels, that remaining CO2 budget will be entirely gone within less than eight and a half years. She's got the numbers. She's got the same cue cards as Ted Turner did. We have X amount of years left to live. 
x as in a variable that is to be determined, not x as in 10. Come on. Come on, guys. Share this with people that you think have no clue about any of this. Because I do honestly believe that most of my viewers have an idea. I'm giving you my honest opinion. I don't have notes in front of me. I have a list of these people. And I'm giving you my own insights. My own feelings and opinions that I've developed over many decades of being involved in following this stuff. With a certain type of eye. With a certain type of mind. Not the better. It's just mine. And I really feel passionate and that this is necessary for me to give to you. I really do. Now, 2022, Vladimir, another Vladimir Zelensky. And for him to be person of the year, simply for being involved in some potentially mostly made up war, I don't know if it is, but it's certainly gaining enough media attention and billions and billions of American digital dollars because we don't have it. We don't actually have the money. As we have said that, um, you know, the Fed met its limit in seven years. In 1920, uh, over 100 years ago, the Fed lost its ability to back money up with gold. Therefore, simply creating money because that's what it does. As soon as you get a dollar, the interest has already been handed off to the economy by the dollar being printed. The dollar is worth less than the paper it's printed on. It's not a joke. That's reality. And there's plenty of other wars going on with women and children dying and good people fighting the fight on the front lines of their own communities. Just getting bombed by us, by other places. None of those people are receiving any time person of the year awards. Because this guy's good on camera and gives, you know, selfie shots as if he's on freaking TikTok. Or maybe he is on TikTok. I don't know. Just because of that? I'm okay on camera. Give me a freaking person of the year award. Oh, right. I'm nobody. We're all nobody. But together, we can be somebody. Perhaps we need to start our own library. Perhaps we need to start our own news magazine where the world, that the real world, the middle Americans, as they credited in 1968, 69, sorry. Maybe, maybe this is the kind of thing, me and the other people that do it, this can grow into something that does prevent another Time magazine from existing. The Washington Post is going down. It's not closing its doors, but it's certainly going to stop printing as of December 25th of this year. That's right. Washington Post is done printing. Is it a success? I wouldn't say it's a direct result of this truth movement, whatever you want to call it. But, um... I would think that this episode has been more than usual a, a, a news segment rather than my typical presentations about ideas. It's hard to say where things are going. And I'm often asked what I think about it. Because people know I'm in this, this mode, this zone. Not because of the show. I've been like this for decades, like I said. But the the most important thing that's on my mind, I don't think about my answers. I just give them. But what I do think about is to never, ever fear monger because that is a treacherous path. If you put a little birdie in someone's ear that the world's going to end in 10 days, like Ted Turner does, like Greta Thunberg does, like Elon Musk has, then... You could send somebody down a, a path of depression that will that could end their entire life and ruin their family. You have to be very careful. I'm telling you, like I see it, Time Magazine is bullshit. And a lot of people, 
are just taking in the lies by the spoonful, by the ladleful, I would say. And the soup kitchen is running out of soup. So let's make sure that we do just keep our heads above water. Stay strong. If you read this stuff, use it as research material. Let it give you a laugh. I laughed several times while putting this information down. Oh, he screwed his co-founder out of his money. Oh my God. It's not funny. I laughed because there's nothing left to do. It's so pr The madness is so predictable at this point that I just don't know what else to say. It's really kooky, to say the very least. Um, I meant to put down Elon Musk. I thought that if he did win, mm, not important. I'm pretty sure he did. I've got plenty on Elon Musk coming. There's plenty to be said about the man. And not because he's the f soup du jour, but because of what he's going to try to do with Twitter because of all the things he's done in the past. That's why. Because I care enough to pass information along to you that you may not have time to do or to find out yourself. I know that anyone watching this show probably watches other things and is interested and wants to know more. If anything, use it for your own personal self-defense. Whether it's a conversation with a family member or a colleague or what could be in the future. But don't fear monger and always make sure you know what you're talking about. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the time to speak to you like this in this fashion. Um, the channel is growing. The amount of content is growing. And as a result, I think the value is growing. And I hope that value brings people in to this little tiny community that is only just now, in my opinion, really kickstarting. It's thanks to you. And the more you share and get my information out, I think the people that find it will benefit from it. As long as they can stomach watching me talk for an hour at a time. Thank you so much for giving me the chance. And I hope to see you next time on Third Eye Edify. <laughs>